いつものやつああうん嫌いやばー Wow even the character herself is getting tired of that catchphrase We opened the third episode with a new pre-episode intro, which, yeah, a week late there, guys, but okay. Huh, can't tell if that sounded more like Spongebob or Imagination Land Guy. Anyway, continuing from last week, Hikari's pendant glowed, pointed to the Tauros, and just by looking at this one frame, I can already tell Mitsuru Aoyama animated this episode. And there was much rejoicing. The pendant stopped reacting just as Hikaru was about to pass it off to Prunes. Thus, the aliens pulled an all-nighter to try and figure out what it meant, with Lala looking like how I look every Sunday morning when I have to upload these videos. The ship's AI told Hikaru that her pendant's reactions were likely tied to the Precure's missions and wait, Hikaru can understand the AI? The AI that's speaking in Lala's language. But I thought Fu's spell was only between the two of them. That's why Lala couldn't understand other humans. Or did the ship become a part of the spell because they were standing it and- Oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. Okay, I admit, I'm kinda of plain because they do provide a proper explanation later. Though I do wonder why the aliens didn't point this out. Anyway, Prunes came up with his own theory. Star Princess no well done! Seriously, weren't the zodiac signs on the pendant a dead giveaway? And thus, Hikaru being Hikaru just ran off our own to try and find the princesses. This didn't mesh well with Lala, who wanted to perform further analysis, even though she had already wasted a night with pretty much no results. While impatiently waiting for her alien friend, Hikaru noticed her pendant reacting again just for a brief moment. She tried to show this to Lala, who was more than a little irritable, understandably so due to the lack of sleep and Hikaru's constant yelling. Yeah, get used to these sorts of exchanges, they're gonna take up a good chunk of this week's episode. Woo. To gather more information, Hikaru took the group to the town square, much to Prunes' objection since he didn't have a proper disguise. He initially tried to pull a solid snake, but Hikaru came up with a different idea. Yeah, except with that bottom, it kind of looks like... You know what, never mind, I don't want to lose my monetization. And of course, the kids these days would want a balloon like that, which sadly do exist. But yeah, Lala managed to talk to the kids. According to her ship's AI, it was likely because of her new pendant. Yeah, I guess they're just throwing out that little plot point of her only being able to communicate with Hikaru. Kind of thought they could have used it to emphasize Lala's feelings of isolation of being a literal alien on another world, but I guess not. Hikaru tried to get some intel from a door stand she frequented. <laughs> okay, the best part of this episode is Fua's face right here. I think she's trying to emulate Hanako's puppet. Eh, yeah, I wouldn't get your hopes up, Hikaru. That series is probably never coming back at this point. Believing that this might be related to the Star Princesses, Hikaru told Lala about it. Well, actually, she didn't explain how it might be connected to the princesses because... I guess we wouldn't have a conflict for this episode. Dad and I guess we needed a reason for Elena to butt in and break up their fight, and provide an admittedly strong intro to her character. Back in my early impressions video, I guess she would be somewhat like now from Smile. And I was pretty much on the money. Anyway, after Hikaru made a face that reminded me of Large Marge, Erna gave them the obvious lesson of the week, and went off to likely prepare for a big episode next week. Elsewhere, Capard was meditating under a small waterfall, god that can't be good for your scalp. During this, he was visited by his fellow Notoreda general, Tenjo. She told him their boss, Garo, was ordering his return, while she took over... wow. Okay, does Muriyama just have a thing for red chicks in really revealing outfits? Not judging or anything, just curious. But yeah, the red skin and the dominatrix mask was meant to present her as a Tengu, and definitely not meant to stimulate any of the show's bigger friends. Back with the Precure, they head to the spot where the giant firefly had been sighted, and apparently Hikaru still hadn't told Lala that it might be related to the Star Princesses. And just as I was starting to lose patience with this episode, so were the Precure with each other. Lala ended up admitting that she just didn't understand how Earthlings think. And in response to the girl who just admitted she was suffering from culture shock, Hikaru gave the most mature response. Yeah, I know how you feel, kiddo. 
I'll talk more about this scene during my closing thoughts, but let's just move on. Hikaru and Lala finally took a minute to just sit down, explain their findings, and the methods they used to attain their intel. Prune summarized these findings. Well, duh. Thanks for playing Double D, Pinky! Using Hikaru's pendant, they found the first star pen. However, just as Hikaru was about to pick it up, Tenjo's minions intercepted it. This, of course, led to a fight with her. And I gotta say, while I do agree Lala has the better singing voice, I do like how they synced up their singing this week. Makes me look forward to what the whole team is gonna sound like when they're assembled. Anyway, in a nice change of pace, Tendro revealed that she was more of a strategist than Kapard who relied on swarming tactics. She instead relied on stonewall tactics, keeping her opponents at bay and eventually exhausting them into submission. However, since they had to hammer in this week's lesson about teamwork, Hikaru and Lala overcame this obstacle by having one of them put up a barrier while the other propelled them forward. This allowed them to take back the pen, which of course turned out to be the Toros pen. Hikaru took ownership of it, and based on how spacious her and Lala's bags were, each of the four main cures of the season were likely going to fit at least three pens in there, plus maybe a few mid-season upgrades. We all know how Toy thinks. It's here that we were also introduced to the function of the pens, which seemed to act as power-ups. And of course, the Zodiac representing a bull would be a strength booster, forcing Tenjo to retreat. After the fight, we saw some toy gimmicks, I mean, very important plot progression, with the Precure unlocking Fuwa's Toros form, which just so happened to be one of the lucky signs this week, I call shenanigans. And they were warped to- OH COME ON! Okay, I joked about the ripple starting the first episode, but you can't tell me that doesn't look like the Fountain of Dreams. I see somebody's trying to muscle in on that Smash Bros craze. Anyway, they also managed to revive the Toros Princess, putting my concerns about them using these ladies as pens to rest. However, she wasn't back at full power, and they still needed to rescue the remaining 11 before all the stars in the universe faded away. With that, they worked back to Earth, and I really think I should include this sound effect. And the episode ended with both girls apologizing to each other for their blockheadedness and wondering when they might encounter their next teammate. Not gonna lie, in spite of some interesting developments near the end, this was a bit of a rough one to get through. I get what they were trying to do with this episode, emphasize the divide between the two cures who were polar opposites of each other, which I even said I was looking forward to seeing more of. Problem is that this felt like a huge step back from how close they became at the end of the last episode. I can kind of understand Lala being uncooperative, lack of sleep and everything, but I think they took Hikaru's antagonism too far. I say this especially because I really don't like stories where many of the characters' problems could be easily solved if they just explained their actions a little better. What was stopping Hikaru from explaining that her pendant had gone off a second time, or how the supposed Firefly could have been related to the Star Princesses? You know, other than how she's both a literal and figurative space case. I'm not saying these two should be incapable of having quarrels, I'm just saying this particular situation just doesn't feel natural or earned, as they had to rely on a lot of forced circumstance. And while Lala was also in the wrong for over-relying on her data, again, Hikaru really lost me when she was about to say she hated her alien friend after she admitted she was having a difficult time adjusting to her new life on Earth. It just doesn't feel right for the lead here to say stuff like this, especially this early into the series. I'll give her points for being the first one to apologize at the end of the episode. Still, this character's just not clicking with me as the main heroine of this show. I really do hope she gets better, because they are starting to introduce some more interesting concepts like the Star Peds, and of course, the Notorator Generals who seem to have their own unique fighting styles. Silly design aside, I do like Tenjo and hope she keeps this strategist theme going, as it did lead to an inventive, albeit a bit of a short fight, and just going by the OP, there's clearly going to be a lot more of these guys, so I hope they all bring something different to the table. Star Twinkle has been off to a solid start up until this point, so let's just hope this is just a minor bump in the grand scheme of things. I'm just about done with my hug toll overview, and while I won't make any promises, I'll try to shoot for either a Wednesday or Thursday release, so look forward to it. Until then though, farewell for now my friends, and- Uh oh, I think a certain pink puffball is upset that they're infringing on his IP in the show. Uh, say, isn't Nintendo loosening up on that sort of stuff? Whoa!
I guess he didn't get the memo. 